Everyone has no difficulty with many of these rolls that are all over the, the great Canadian downhill. This great Scott turn is the second difficult turn in the lower part, and now it's full on blasting to the bottom. We're going to pick him up at the interval time. We'll be able to compare to times yesterday. One minute, 28.52 at the interval. That's a little faster than he was yesterday. I expect to see them cut about a second or so off the time, but it's going to be very fast on the bottom. The, the legends skied down the lower part of the course this morning, and they said it was so icy they were having trouble making good turns. So these guys are going to be rocketing down this fast finishes. Helmut Hoofliner, whose first ever World Cup victory was at nearby Lake Louise in 1983. He has won three races so far this season. <laughs> Hoofliner, two minutes, 3.86 seconds. Very good time, slightly slower than the time posted by Mueller yesterday at 2.03, but a very good run by Helmut Hoofliner. And here is Todd Brucker from Paris, Ontario. Todd, a winner two weeks ago at Ferrano, Japan. Only 11th, though, last weekend at Aspen, and he really has had a lot of trouble in practice camp. Big problem there. Now, he hit hard, and he's well off his line. Todd has had trouble through the middle sections, these broad sweeping turns. Much better there through Kreiner's corner today than he was yesterday. He's not as technically proficient as Huff Leonard or a skier like Zubrigan. Where he makes up his time is on the lower part, where it's really gutting it out through the high speed and through the rollers. He hasn't been on his line. He's been losing a lot of time. So what he wants to do today, if he wants to be in the top three, is really ski the upper part well. And we'll see it as he comes to the interval time. He is way back at the interval, well behind Hoofliner. Well, Todd, he's three seconds behind. We'll have no chance to make up time on the bottom. It's fairly straight. You can see that he's holding his tuck, absorbing all the many rolls in the terrain. No problem down here. The skiers are going about 120 kilometers an hour plus down through the finished shoes, but it's impossible to make up that time that he's lost in the upper part. So disappointing. For, there you see it, 130 kilometers an hour, just incredibly fast. Two minutes, 6.64 seconds for Paris, Ontario's Todd Brooker. So Brooker started 20th at Val Gardena, is not happy with his final run of the year. He was third at Kitzbühel and won at Toronto. The Austrian veteran Hardy Weirather and Ken, when you talk about disappointing seasons, none has been more disappointing than Weirather. Well, Weirather's had a very tough time this year. His best result is a 10th. He missed his turn on Kreiner's corner there. You want to be right in on the gate. He was about two meters away from the gate. This is a critical race for him because he must perform well today if he wants to stay in the first seed, the top 15 elite in the world. He's had a tough year, really hasn't been on his skis enough. It's a disappointment to see a World Cup, a former World Cup champion and a world champion. Look at this, though, at the interval. Weirather is ahead of both Hoofletter and Brooker. He's rising to the occasion. This is what Hardy Weirather is so well known to do. He had difficulty at the World Championships in 1982 in training, and he came on to win the World Championship. So he knows if he does not ski well today, he will lose his first seed standing, and he's doing it again. He's rising to the occasion. He is being very aggressive, slightly slower than Todd Brooker through the final shoes. But he has got a minor advantage over Hoofliner. And he lost it on the bottom part of the course, so it is Hoofliner, Weirather, and Brooker. But really a good run for Weirather. His previous best finish has been a 10th at Kitzbühel. Skier number four from West Germany, Sepp Weilgruber. This will be interesting. Will Gruber's been on a real streak, finishing second in Ferrano, third, and he's down. Looks like he's, he's sliding. Yes, he's okay. He All must right. have missed, missed one of the turns. Very difficult here at the Panorama Downhill, the way that the turns sweep back and forth. You cannot catch an edge or make a critical mistake. The 25-year-old is down, and we look at it again. Weilgruber falling at the top of the course. He set up well, coming over Pod's pitch, and leaned in. That was his difficulty. He leaned in, the, 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 and that caught him. The pitch falls away. The racer must stand on that downhill ski, the left ski, and that caused it to go out from underneath him, and it was impossible for him to make the next corner. 
Well, fortunately, Vile Gruber is not injured. Reminds me when you see a West German skier go down of that nasty fall that Gatterman took. Remember at Kitzbühel this year? Very difficult, bad fall, but Gatterman's back again racing. And we are back to racing. Skier number five is 23-year-old Michael Meyer from Italy. This will be interesting. I thought that Mikhail Meyer might be able to pick up do very well on this course even though it's quite technical he's not well known to be able to handle the turns he was very wide in lucy's wheel there but he's very good on the rollers he really lets those skis run and he's so big he's 100 kilos he can really pick up time on the bottom because it's so straight and so fast critical for him is to ski these turns through the central part very cleanly setting up and carrying the speed this cor course is Really a big advantage to the technical skiers. Skiers like Zubrigan, like Hufflander, like Mueller. They've been able to make up so much time through the central section. The good gliders, though, can make up time on the bottom, and Meyer is an outstanding glider. Through Irwin's incline, dropping over, and now it's full on to the bottom. He didn't even fly off it. <laughs> Coming to the interval time. And he has a second to make up, 129.64. Problems off Ree's roll. He wanted to keep low in aerodynamic. He wasn't prepared, didn't make a pre-jump. But you can see he's got the hands in front of him, breaking the wind. Very high speed through these rolls, and he's holding his tuck superbly. Michael Meyer, ninth at Kitzbühel, sixth at Bengen, fifth at Garmisch and fifth behind Todd Brooker two weeks ago at Ferrano. That's the same speed, I believe, that Byrather had. So Huffliner has been blistering down the lower part. And Meyer moves into third place, so the leader is still Helmut Huffliner, now followed by Hardy Byrather, Michael Meyer, and Todd Brooker drops down to the number four position. We talked it about it being a disappointing year for Byrather, it has certainly been a disappointing year for this man, skier number six, the Olympic champion, American go, go, Billy D. Johnson. And Billy's not going to have much luck on this course today. He's been way behind in training. He has been trying to come back, but it's so technical. It just doesn't really suit him that much. Hopefully, we'll see a good result because, really, he lends a lot to World Cup racing, bringing two Americans, Doug Lewis and Billy Johnson, into the top 15, creates even that much more interest and attention throughout North America, along with Todd Brooker. Billy Johnson had a great remark. He said, yesterday, I predicted six World Cup victories. I don't think I'm going to make it. And at the interval time, Johnson, fourth fastest. The best still belongs to Weirather, although Weirather is second to Hooflinner. Skied the bump very, very well. Kept low. That's, that's his classic position. Rode up the lift with one of his trainers this morning, and he said, you know, Billy's had a disappointing year, but he'll be back next year. His pride will make sure that he's back. He realizes that he made an error. He, he really didn't train the way he should have. 126 kilometers an hour the speed. And believe it or not, the crowd is booing. Billy D. Johnson, whose best result, a seventh in the second of two races at Bengen, comes in two minutes, 6.59 seconds in the number four position, dropping Todd Brooker down to fifth. The leader is still the 1984-85 downhill champion, Helmut Hufflinger. And here is Hufflinger's teammate, 26-year-old Peter Bernsberger. Now, is, here is the interesting story in the World Cup chase. The second and third place medals are still up for grabs. Peter Bernsberger is presently tied for third. So between Mueller, Alpiger, Bernsberger, Heinzer, and Zubrigan, we're looking, and he's missed a gate. That's very disappointing for Vernsberger. Very disappointing. He just was offline there. And that puts him out of today's race. So two of the first seven skiers have gone out. Weilgruber from West Germany fell, was not injured. And now the Austrian, Peter Vernsberger, goes off the course. Vernsberger, by the way, a winner of the second of two races at Wengen. And I'm wondering, Ken, why two of the first seven out so early? Well, the difference between training and racing, they've been looking for their line all week long, but today's the race. Today is the critical one. They want to give 100%. So sometimes, in going a little harder, you make those errors. Skier number eight, as we go back up top, is Daniel Mayer from Switzerland. Now, still to come, 
Zerbrigan, Lewis, and Elfiger. Well, this is the first of the Swiss onslaught, and they just start coming after this. Mara has been running very well in training. Been handling these sweeping turns. We see him through Todd's twister. Very important to be able to carve the ski, stand on that outside ski, setting up here for the pitch, and carry the speed through into the central part of the course. This is where the race is won and lost, though. Down into his tuck, he's making good turns so far. Very wide there, but set up for the bump. A little bit ragged, he hit, hitting on his edges, but he's looking for that little bit of extra speed. Handling the turns well, you can see that it just goes back and forth, sweeping around on this great Canadian downhill course. Great Scott, a very sharp right-hand turn. Critical to carry the speed out onto this lower part because if you don't have the speed, you've lost it. You just simply can't make it back. That time on the left, the best interval belongs to Byrather. Byrather, though, is second to Hooflinger. But look at this. Marr from Coors, Switzerland, is now third. Well, now we'll see. He's got three-tenths of a second to make up on the lower part. Hooflinger set a blistering pace. Vyrather lost a little bit of time to Hufflander on the lower part. So far, Maurer has been very relaxed. Watch his lower legs absorb all the rolling terrain as he comes down below. 129 kilometers an hour, one kilometer an hour slower than Hufflander, but he's kept his aerodynamic position very well. Look at him keeping that track as he approaches the finish. Yes, Daniel Maurer, the young Swiss skier whose best performance has been a fifth at Bad Klein Kirkheim goes into the lead ahead of Austrian Helmut Hufflinger. This race being carried live to Switzerland today. Marr, the first of five consecutive Swiss skiers. The second, Conradin Kaffelman from Lax. Been a disappointing second half of the season for Conradin. Started off very strongly this year. Really has not been on it. Wide in Kreiner's corner there. He's looking very, standing well on the skis, but it's important to keep that line, carry the speed. He's a little bit ragged, a little bit rough. The arms move about a little bit. Not as smooth as Hufflander or Marer. Although Marer had some difficulty, almost caught his inside edge, slid out slightly, and that will cost him in the lower part. He won't carry as much speed. And at the interval, Kaffelman with only the fifth best time. Remember two years ago, Kenny had won at Val d'Azer, won at Val Gardain. In fact, yourself and many were picking him to win it all last year. I remember his win at Val d'Azer very much because he beat me out by one, <laughs> one tenth of a second. <laughs> Skiing the lower part, he's a little bit rough. You want to keep. Marer has picked up so much time in the lower part, and you can see he let his legs act like pistons, and it carry that speed. Kattelman is only 124 kilometers an hour. Very important to be loose, relaxed, follow the track. You can see that it's beginning to glisten up. Kattelman into the number seven position. That means Brooker is still sixth. Marr, the leader. Hooflander is second, followed by Byrather. And here is Perman Zerbregen, the story at this year's World Championships when he won the downhill and the combined. And of course, he made history by winning back-to-back -back races at Kitzbühel. Well, this is maybe the most critical race in the chase for the World Cup overall championship. Zerbregen must pick up World Cup points. Now, this is a course that's well suited for him because it is so technical. It's very similar to Kitzbühel to Bormio because it places a premium on being able to make good turns. He is presently stands 45 points behind Helmut or behind Mark Giardelli for the overall chase. He must pick up points today. By the way, Giardelli will ski in the number 18 position and look at this, Zerbregen with the best intermediate time and remember he is dynamite on the lower part of this course. Well, he's been slow in training, but he really, if he carries the speed, it's icy today. What he must do is what Marer did, be very relaxed, let the eight legs move up and down, absorbing this rough terrain. There are many rolls all the way down, you can see him trying to relax. He's a little bit ragged and slower than Marer. Very close. Down in that low tuck, it will be beginning to speed up very slightly. No, sir, Zerbregen will be third. Marr is still the leader, so it is Marr, Hooflinger, and Zerbregen. And can the incredible Swiss onslaught continues. Here is Peter Mueller. Mueller, the favorite now. 
after winning one week ago today in Aspen and, of course, having the best training times here this week at Panorama. Well, he's absolutely dominating training. Was over a second ahead yesterday, posting a 203.40. So if he skis the same kind of run, and even yesterday we were watching his runs, it was very ragged, but he really lets them go. He's very aggressive. He's on a roll. Skiing nicely, he's not the prettiest skier on the circuit, but if you watch his skis closely, they really run. They don't hit hard, he's always carving a good turn. Now he's coming to the interval. And he is ahead of his teammate Zerbrigan at the interval. Clearly ahead. Watch Mueller down the lower part. Look at where his hands are, right in front of his face, making a perfect aerodynamic position. The legs move up and down absorbing all the terrain, not out of control at all, always anticipating every roll, sm carving smoothly through Anderson's alley, the two turns, a little bit of problem there, but look at that speed, 130 kilometers an hour, and he's down into a low, low aerodynamic tuck now. Looking for the track there, you can see him coming down on the track set before, and he's gonna be way ahead. No question at all about this one, the Swiss now stand one, two. Mueller has gone into first place. Maher is second, and Hoofletter is third. That will be a very tough time to beat. Peter Mueller, who had been second on so many occasions, including the World Championships, finally got it all together for a win last week in Aspen. The fifth of the Swiss skiers is 22-year-old Franz Heinzer. He could ski this course very well. He's been going well in training, very technically proficient. Much like Mueller, he stands well on his skis, carves a clean edge, a little rough there, but it's important on this course to really carve through these high-speed sweeping turns, carrying the speed, keeping, trying to be as aerodynamic as possible, but it's more important to really search for speed, keeping the ski running smoothly. We'll see Heinzer as he comes to the interval if he's gonna be competitive with Mueller. He's a bit behind, 1.7 out already. Perfect off Reed's roll, though. Took that superbly, and he's down into a low bullet tuck, much lower than any of the earlier racers. He may be able to make up a little bit of time, but Mueller has really dominated this race so far. Ken, remember earlier this season, we were in Europe, the early part of the year, they were saying, what's wrong with Mueller? A lot of people were writing Mueller off. He has indeed made a tremendous comeback. Well, he built himself back. He said he felt he had a viral infection last year that really didn't get him going. But this year, he's trained hard, and he's been the man to beat. And Heinzer goes into the number seven position. And so that will drop Todd Brooker down to number nine. And there is Peter Mueller as we go back up top for the American Story 1985. Doug Lewis from Salisbury, Vermont. Lewis, 20 years of age, a bronze at the World Championship. Lewis has had a lot of difficulty in this section in training. Twice he has missed the gate. Let's see how he handles it today. Perfect. He's a little bit off his line, about one meter, but he's been very aggressive, really letting them go, and he kept on missing that turn on the bump, and he missed the next gate. So he's, this is a course that should suit him well. He's technically very strong, and he's really aggressive, perhaps too aggressive. But he is hungry. He wants those victories. Over Irwin's incline and coming down to the interval time in between Irwin's incline and Reed's roll. And he is nowhere near Peter Mueller at the interval. Mueller trying for his second consecutive World Cup victory. Well, you can see that even amongst the first 15, we've had a, a variation at the interval time of up to three seconds already. And that's because it's so technical on the upper part. Those that are proficient, Hufflinger, Zubrigan, Meyer, they have just dominated. But look at Lewis is really screaming on the lower part, 120, 28 kilometers. You are watching live exclusive coverage of the Molson World Downhill from Panorama, British Columbia. Doug Lewis into the number eight position that drops Todd Rooker down to number 10. The leader, Peter Mueller, followed by his teammate, Marr, and the downhill champion from Austria, Helmut Hoflinner. Anton Steiner is 26 years of age from Austria. Steiner 
having a, been skiing very well. This is a course that should be really suited for him because he's so, he is another one of the very technically proficient downhillers. And that seems to be the new trend in downhill racing. In, in the interest of trying to keep the speeds a little bit under control, they're becoming more and more technical. And that's one of the reasons why we see many of these skiers who have excelled in other disciplines, either slalom or giant slalom, doing so well in downhill. And the Canadian program has turned around and they're trying to put more emphasis into training all three disciplines as well. As we look at the intermediate time, Steiner in the number six position. Interesting you should say that, Ken, because Chris Kent, who we will see coming up shortly, the best Canadian here so far, credits his success. He's come back from an injury last November to doing some technical training. He's been skiing the GS and the slalom courses. Well, he always was a very good skier, but for many years, through the late 70s, early 80s, many of our downhillers got channeled only into downhill. Chris Kent is the good example because this year, because of his injury, he was only skiing slalom and GS, and now it really shows because he's confident. Anton Steiner, two minutes, 4.37 seconds, and into the number six position. The man that owns it all so far is the Swiss veteran, Peter Mueller. The final skier in the top seed, the first 15, and I think a fellow that could really catch Mueller is Carl Elpiger, his young teammate. Well, he, along with Urs Raber, were here for the 1982 Canadian Championships. He's a, been really on a roll. Started well back at the beginning of the year, starting in the number 40s, has built himself up and finishing now, starting now in the first seat, won at backline Kirchheim. He was a little bit offline there, that will hurt him. But he's now, it's now official, he will finish third in the overall World Cup Downhill Championship because Peter Vernsberger, who he was tied with, has not been able to pick up points. So what a sensational story, starting from so far behind and now coming forward and finishing third in the World Cup. However, he is well behind at the interval, ninth best. It's amazing. Here's a fellow that is number 52 at the beginning of the season. And right now, in his last three races, a win at Bad Flank Kirkheim, fourth at Ferrano, and second to Mueller one week ago in Aspen. Well, he, it's, it's one of the things about downhill racing. You get on a roll, you get confident, and confidence is that factor. Very fast on the bottom, 130 kilometers an hour. He may be able to pick up a few spots. But confidence, knowing that you can handle the high speed, just makes all the difference in the world. Carl Elfiger indeed uh, does not pick up very much time on the bottom part of this course. So after the first seed, the top 15, the leader is Peter Mueller from Switzerland, followed by his teammate Marr and Helmut Hooflinger. Todd Brooker is standing 10th, and our live coverage will continue right after this. Welcome back live to Panorama, British Columbia. Thomas Bergler, skier number 17 at the interval. I'm Brian Williams along with Ken Reed and Ted Reynolds. The leader is Peter Mueller. Mueller is followed by his Swiss teammate, Marr, and the 1984-85 downhill champion, Helmut Hoflener from Austria. This is a surprise to see Bergler in the seventh place at the interval time. He's one of the technical skiers. He's only running this really to get familiar with the hill for the Super G, the Molson Super G, which we'll be broadcasting tomorrow. Really, he doesn't expect to even finish in the World Cup points, so he may pick up a couple of bonus points today, and yes, he does. Well, he lost three positions on the bottom part of the course, but he's 10th, and there's our leader, Switzerland's Peter Mueller, trying to make it back-to-back. -back. A win last week in Aspen, and he's leading right now. Here's one of the great stories, though, in World Cup racing, Mark Girardelli from Luxembourg. Well, it's the big race now to see who will make it, pick up the points, and look at that, fifth at the interval. Now, Girardelli has been losing some time in the bottom. The reason why is because this is, o is only his third downhill this year. He has not trained very much, so they, these skiers, the technical skiers, do not have the proficiency in knowing how to handle it. But he is such a good skier. He's been able to handle the upper turns very well. But in the World Cup race between him and Zubrig, and this is a critical race, he can pick up a lot of World Cup points, and he may, in fact, clinched the title today. He may be able to pick up enough to be out of reach of Herman Zubrigan. Excellent run for Giardelli. Giardelli, the Austrian who has now given up and is living in Luxembourg. Very, very happy. He's a slalom and giant slalom specialist and stands in the number six position. Skier number 19 is Stefan Niederseer from Austria. Skied very well in training. 
He's been able to handle these turns quite well. We see him in the eighth position there. Really incredible the way that Mueller has dominated this race, though. Over a second ahead of Niederseer here at the interval time. And although a skier, Niederseer, he's finished several times in the top ten, was third at Bad Klein Kirchheim, really hasn't been able to keep up to that blistering pace. Ken, if we look back to Girardelli, remember last week in Aspen when Zerbriggen came down with the best time in practice and Girardelli tied him? I thought Zerbriggen's eyes were going to fall out of his head. He could not believe how well Girardelli has been coming on as Niederseer comes down to the finish in 204.89. Standing in ninth place, a good result for this young Austrian. The young, younger Austrians are looking to try to build their confidence. Athens is off the course. Kernan. No, that is Bruno Kernan, I believe, Ken. Bruno Kernan, skier number 20. The 23-year-old from Switzerland is off the course. Very disappointing. Kernan was running extremely well in training and has been very strong in the last few weeks. Had a couple of very good results in the first three at Ferrano. Very disappointing. And back up live, this is Gary Athens, the 23-year-old from Kelowna. Athens, the second Canadian we are seeing here today. Todd Brooker right now standing well, well back. Gary is looking to get a good result. He hasn't had very many good results this year. He's been running so-so in training, but because this is a technical course, all these sweeping turns, his ex background experience, he used to be a member of the Canadian slalom and giant slalom team, has served him in good stead. He's been very aggressive. No trouble whatsoever with any of the turns so far. A little bit wild in the upper body, but he's really letting those skis run, carving some good turns. He'd like to get a good time here, Ken. Brooker right now standing in only the number 17 position. A bitterly disappointing race for Todd Brooker. And just joining our live coverage, the leader is Peter Mueller. At the interval, not bad at all. Gary Athens is eight. That's an excellent time. Now, Athens has the experience to be able to maybe pick up some time in the bottom. However, he has had lots of difficulty over the last several races throughout this season trying to keep on the bottom. And look, at now he's beginning to tire not be absorbing the bumps as well as Mueller or Hoofliner did. Very important to be relaxed. Let the legs act like pistons because then the skis keep sliding, they keep flat, you don't catch edges, and you pick up time. Time on the left belongs to Mueller. Gary Athens, not bad at all. Gary Athens is 12th, the only Canadian in the top 15. Our live coverage of the 1985 Molson World Downhill will continue. It's Peter Mueller leading Marr and Hooflinger. Welcome back live to beautiful Panorama British Columbia. Stephen Lee from Australia. Lee skier number 23 just coming through well back in the interval. And Ken, he of course is the Canadian downhill champion. Of 1985, that's right had some very good results in a big surprise, won the Super G at Ferrano in Japan back in a World Cup race. So he had a couple of weekends there that were really outstanding. Was disappointed last weekend in Aspen with his result. And he looks forward to racing here in Canada. He says he enjoys our beverages. Mike's taking home the silverware too. Lee just out of the top 15, the first seed in the number 16 position. If you're just joining us, the leader is Peter Mueller. The top Canadian, Gary Athens, stands in the number 12 position. Todd Brooker has dropped way down to number 18. From Switzerland, this is 24-year-old Silvano Maley. Silvano has been very disappointing this year, been well off the pace, and certainly has not been a factor here in training. At 1.30, already he's well behind the leaders. Trying to finish into the top, fit the first 15, really he's going to have to pick up time to the bottom part. Melee is skier number 24. Just a reminder, skier number 28 is Marcus Vosmeyer from West Germany. Vosmeyer, who stunned everyone yesterday with the second fastest time behind Peter Mueller, won the gold medal in the giant slalom at the World Championships in Borneo. We see him down the finish shoes here. Very important to keep those aerodynamic positions nice and low. And Mele at 206.33 into the number 18 position. Well behind this man, Switzerland's Peter Mueller, who looks to be on his way. Almost home free, I would say, for his second consecutive victory. This is Klaus Gatterman from West Germany. 
We talked about Gatterman earlier. Ken had a tremendously bad fall at Kitzbühel earlier this season. And through the oh, interval, oh, Gatterman oh, in the number 22 position. It was a tough fall. Put him out for a couple of weeks, but he came back in the true fashion of a downhiller. He was resilient. He bounced back. Lots of bruises, but no problems. And he hasn't really... Unfortunately, what it did, did do is it, it, it tossed him off. He was skiing so well before he had that bad accident. And really, since then, hasn't been able to get back on track. But he's shown that he does have the ability. And this young German team has really been something else. But Peter Mueller is standing in the finish, and he is waiting for one man. And it is Gatterman's teammate, Marcus Vossmeyer. As Gatterman, skier number Number 25 comes in in the number 22 position. Bosmeyer will be skier number 28. We are all waiting. The West German, really, I would say, the only skier with a real shot at catching Mueller. The first of two skiers from Italy is 22-year-old Alberto Guidoni. Handled the turn coming into Irwin's incline very nicely. Standing 17th in the position. He's got a very low tuck and nice off reads roll. Look how low he rolls his shoulders and has those hands right in front of him, looking for that aerodynamic position. He may pick up some time in the bottom and might be able to crack the first 15, the also important place to pick up those World Cup points. This young Italian team has been doing well all year. They've enjoyed coming to Canada to race here. It's a tough downhill. It's a fast downhill. The other Italian, Meyer, standing in the number eight position. There is only one Canadian in the top 15. That's Gary Athens 12th. Athens will remain in the number 12 position. And Guidoni goes into the number 13 position. One more skier before we get to Vosmeyer. And that is Italy's Mauro Cornaz. Here's Cornaz. Well, as we saw, Guidoni finished in the World Cup points, picked up time on the bottom. Let's see if Cornaz can say, do the same thing. Through the interval, he's a little bit faster than his teammate. The Godoni was very aggressive on the lower part, had the shoulders rolled over. Cornaz is not quite as aggressive, isn't as, isn't as low as he was, and it's very important. At speeds of 130 kilometers an hour in these lower parts, you really have to absorb the bumps, and you have to be very, very subtle with the skis. You cannot allow them to ride up, which happens very quickly. You cut hundreds of seconds off your time. And you have to also be looking to try to stay in that track because it's faster. Time on the left belongs to the leader, Switzerland's Peter Mueller, two minutes, 3.12 seconds. And here is Marcus Vosmeyer from West Germany. Vosmeyer second only to Mueller in yesterday's final practice run. Well, this is a surprise that he has come on so strong in this race, but it's really technical. And he stands third, 128.47. Now, Mueller was really tough on the bottom, but look at, look at Vosmeyer. He has his elbows right together. That's the fastest aerodynamic position you can keep in but it's very tough to hold it at high speed through rough terrain no problem he kept his tuck over the roll even Mueller was out of his tuck there look at the way the shoulders are rolled forward really being aggressive down here he's the world champion in giant slalom and it's really showing that he's been able to pick up time coming to the bottom no, Vosmeyer, in fact, loses four places at the bottom part of the course to go into the number seven position. The leader is still Peter Mueller, followed by his teammate Marr and Helmut Hoeflener, the top Canadian Gary Athens in the number 15 position, and will Welcome back to our live coverage of the 1985 Molson World Downhill from beautiful Panorama near Invermere, British Columbia. As we look at Philippe Verneray from France, the leader is Peter Mueller on his way to his second consecutive victory. Verneray's well behind at the interval time. Really won't be able to pick up any time to the leaders on the bottom part. Mueller has just skied this lower part superbly. Not only was he ahead at the interval, he made up time to the bottom. Several Canadians still to come. And notable is Chris Kent standing number 47 who was very, very strong in training. And Verderay, skier number 30, well, well behind the leader, Peter Mueller. Skier number 31 is 24-year-old Peter Dewar from West Germany. This young West German team coming on so strong, 
Bosmeyer right now in the number seven position at the interval. Dewar is 21st. It's been a big, big 10 days of racing in this area, Ken. The three races at Sunshine last week in nearby Banff, two races here at Panorama this weekend. And let's not forget that on Saturday, March 30th, all you people in the Calgary area, come on out to Lake Louise for the Ken Reed Invitational. Well, we've got the Molson Crazy Canuck Challenge, and it's exactly as it says. We've got all the Crazy Canucks. Nancy Green confirmed with us yesterday. We've got Dave Murray, Dave Irwin, Jim Hunter, who are going head-to-head -head against a number of invited Europeans. It should be fun. And Peter Doerr into the number 27 position. And Ken, all proceeds from your celebrity challenge as we look at 20-year-old Gunther Markser from Liechtenstein go where? They go to cystic fibrosis, which is the one, the main charity, which will be a part of the celebrity race. And then the, the, the Crazy Canuck Challenge, the proceeds will go to the National Alpine Ski Team Program. And at the interval, Markser in the number 25 position. The leader is Peter Mueller. Still to come is Chris Kent from Calgary. And again, for all you people in this area, Calgary, Eastern British Columbia, the Ken Reed Invitational Saturday, March 30th at Lake Louise. We see Markser on the lower part of the course. He's been very fast through the middle section, but he had a very bad fall at the World Championships in Barmio, and since then really has been off form. When you have a tough fall like that where you get a concussion, often it, it, is, it hurts your confidence, and you just aren't being aggressive looking for speed. Uh, Gunther Markser into the number 28 position. So through 32 skiers, as we look at skier number 33, Rudolf Huber from Austria, the leader is Peter Mueller, followed by his teammate Marr and the world champion Helmut Hoeflinger. Gary Athens, the lone Canadian in the top seed. Gary in the number 15 position. At the interval, Huber, 28th. And really, Ken, you can't say enough about Athens. I know it's only position number 15, but for Gary, maybe the beginning of the long road back. Well, that's exactly that. He skied very well through the turns. He showed that he does have the technical competence to be able to ski with the best. He's still looking to regain his confidence. Perhaps it wasn't the best thing for him to be skiing in the first seed this year. He should be looking to build up and get the results from outside of the first seed to really belong there. He felt that he had to finish for in the first 15 all the time, and really, it perhaps was an impossible task this year, but a great result. And Huber into the number 25 position. Right now, let's join Ted Reynolds and Todd Brooker. Ted? Okay, thanks, Brian. Todd, this is a tough league here today. It's a really tough league, that's right. Uh, I think it was a darn good race today, though, and uh, everything concerning the course now was just great. I just made one very, very big mistake there and almost went down, but, you know, that's the kind of course it is. I think there's a lot of places uh, where you can fall or, you know, it's, it's a difficult course. You were sidecarring it almost, I guess, up there. Right? Yeah. I don't know what the problem was today. I thought I really thought I could pull something out of the hat today and really do well on this course, and I think I skied a lot of it uh, quite well, but... You know, I dumped almost all my speed on that spot right there, and that was really critical. So that was uh, basically game over. Mueller did an amazing job, didn't he? Yeah, he skied really well all week. Uh, every run was so consistent. He skied the course the way you have to, uh, despite uh, the fact that there's a lot of small turns. He smoothed them all out, and he, he carried his speed all the way through. So he was a deserved winner today. You must be sort of glad that the season's at last over, though. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think I've learned a, an awful lot of things this year. I should be happy. You know, I had a first and a third this year. It was better than last year, I think. I think it's great any time when you can win a race any year. But uh, I think there's a lot of things I, I want to do in my training this year. I want to work on some GS and slalom and, and, and try and improve on the things that I'm weak at this year. We'll get them next year, eh? Thanks a lot, Teddy. Okay. Right, back to you, Brian. All right, Ted, thank you. Interesting, Ken. We're talking earlier about concentrating on the technical aspects of skiing as we look at Marzola, Ivan Marzola from Italy. And Todd, they're saying, I want to get back to basics. Well, that's what the Canadian team is really looking for. They, they've analyzed that that perhaps is the weakness in the program and why the results really haven't been there this year. And a good example is what's happened with Chris Kent. He has spent this entire year working on slalom and giant slalom. And he comes into his first World Cup downhill and bang, he's right in there. Marzola, the young Italian, 21 years of age, well back in the field. Speaking of Chris Kent, he will be skier number 47. Marzola is skier number 35. 
Back up to the top of the mountain, the third Canadian, another one of the Red Mountain skiers from here in British Columbia, number 37 is Felix Belchek. The Felix has been a little bit better of late since the Canadian Championship, since they came home. He's been a little bit more confident. It was a long haul, a long, difficult haul in Europe this winter. The results really weren't there. He seems to be standing a little better on his skis, more confident. And the interesting thing, as Brooker said, this team now has, since they came back, has really been concentrating on training Super G Giant Slalom and Slalom to work at their technical elements. Their real, the coaches realize that that's a weakness. Now, Belchick was really wide there in that turn. Not too bad in Kreiner's corner. They'll have dumped some speed in that broad sweeping turn. Very important because it's fall away and to really be online all the way through the central section because of the rolls, Hunter's hump, Murray's moonshot, and through these tough turns like Great Scott. We, drop, we pick him up now, approaching Irwin's incline, and from there down, it's just full on staying in a tuck. So we'll see where Belchuk is. Hello, Billy. At now, Belchuk 21st, you hear people yelling, come on, Felix, a whole lot of fans up here from the Red Mountain Ski Club today. Very good on the jump. Kept the low position, the hands in front of him, didn't let his chest come up. He's letting, he's absorbing the bumps. Little hard landing off that one roller there, but letting the legs act like pistons up and down, and making sure he, he is working to try to keep those shoulders rolled down. He's not doing it quite as well as Mueller, but he has a similar kind of tuck. He's really got his hands in front of his face. Belchuk skiing out of the number 37 position is 21st, and he will be happy with that. The leader, though, is Peter Mueller, and he is standing right by with Ted Reynolds. You bet he is, Brian. Peter, you must have skied almost perfectly today. I, I have great races here, and also the training run was good, and today also, and uh, I'm really happy, that's right. But you were perhaps even a little better in the top section today than during the training, do you think? I think I had to make not so much mistakes in the top section than in the last training run, and I uh, had also the best in the medium, the first best in the medium, and uh, I take a good line. It was a little bit more slippery, and then you must be a little bit harder in the turns on the ski, and... Uh, but I'm really happy with my run, and it was a great one. And the downhill course was one of the difficult that I ever done, and... Uh, I'm happy that I can win this one. <laughs> Maybe you should move to North America. You win a lot of races over here. <laughs> That's right. It's my fifth victory here, and uh, I win also five in Europe. And uh, <laughs> we see that. But with this form, I think I can win on every place. OK, it was also being televised live back to Switzerland. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> OK, Peter, congratulations. Back to Brian and Ken. All right, thank you, Ted Reynolds. The leader is Peter Mueller from Switzerland. Helmut Hoflander is third. The only Canadian in the top 15. Gary Athens is 15th, and we'll be right back. Have a British Columbia. Ken Reed, here's a real surprise. This is skier number 40, Michael Brown, the American from Vail, Colorado, with a very good intermediate time. Interesting fact, he is the Canadian Super G champion, had a very good result at the Whistler Mountain Race this year, 1985. Real surprise because he skied the upper part very well, and if he can carry it on this lower part, he's had a good tuck so far. He could crack the first 15. Might be disappointing for the Canadians because Gary Athens is presently 15th. No, Brown does not crack the top 15. And 22-year-old Mike Brown from Vail, Colorado, his second season on the World Cup circuit in the number Gary, 23 position. Ted Reynolds. G Gary, you're 15th right now, and you have to be pretty happy the way things have been going. Uh, I'm pretty happy with today. I really uh, pulled out all the pulled out all the stops and really went for it. Uh, the only threat I think I have now is Chris Kent, and I hope he doesn't beat me. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, Kenny said as you were coming down the bottom that perhaps you didn't still have that strength that you really have to have. Well, no, I didn't. I, I really didn't. wasn't able to let my skis run and relax and stay in a real low compact position. I think I was probably quite fast. I had a pretty good upper upper section, and uh, it's still giving me some problem. You know, if it was maybe about 10, 15 seconds shorter, I would have been, I think, probably better than than 15th. So, uh, next steps just to really get all that resolved and uh, take it from there. I'm looking forward to next year. Okay, thanks a lot, Gary. Thanks, Ted. Back to you, Brian. All right, thank you, Ted. A bit of a delay here at Panorama British Columbia. Ken, I can remember back to Wengen, Switzerland. Gary was so, so disappointed, skiing in the first seed, finishing back in the 40s. 
told me he was almost embarrassed. You're watching live coverage of the 1985 Molson World Downhill from Panorama, British Columbia, and we'll return right after this. Today's race, but the entire week. Very much so. The whole valley, the Windermere Valley Foundation, was formed to put on this race, put on World Cup week. They've done a tremendous job. The enthusiasm throughout the Windermere Valley has just been infectious. We had the parade earlier on in the week. Tremendous crowd in Invermere. They said it was the largest crowd since, what was it that burned down? I think since the old Invermere Inn burned down. <laughs> but they've got a beautiful new one there now. But it's, uh, they, you know, they, they've put a... a so much work into making this happen and they've got a good downhill here now we've had many people say what do the Europeans think what do you think about this hill it's a tough downhill and you really you know really the only comments I have to make about it are ones that would make it better and so you know when you have that when you have that base to work with you know that you've got a good race a good organizing committee they've done a tremendous job the enthusiasm is there well, we have a delay up at the top of the mountain, and uh, the leader is still Peter Mueller, followed by Mara and Hooflinner. And right now, once again, from the finish area, let's check in with Ted. Well, here's one of Kenny's old running partners over here, Brian. Dave Murray is taking a sort of a busman's holiday. Hey, we've got a great new downhill in Canada, eh? Fantastic course, and the conditions today just couldn't be better. I mean, the, the sun and the view here of the, of the downhill from the bottom, it's just amazing. Great race. When you see these guys doing it, do you still sort of get a little itch? Well, I would be lying if I said no, but, uh, you know, I put in good ten, a good 10 years, and uh, I don't regret a, a single minute of it. Now I'm out of it. There's a lot, lot of more challenges ahead, you know, in my life now other than, than downhill racing. But, uh, you know, I, it's, it's great to be here and know this sport so intimately that you can get all, all kinds of things out of the race and the racers and the whole thing that's going on, all the innuendos and... If you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, before it started, had you picked a winner? Did you figure somebody might win this race? Well, I think from training and from the, the type of course that it is here in, in Panorama, uh, I guess Mueller, most people had their, their chips down on Mueller. And uh, when he came off the top pitch ahead, it was certainly a win for him once he, you know, once he gets on the flats, there's nothing stopping him. He was, I guess, almost as good as you can be on this hill today. Well, I would say so. He skied a, a beautiful race, but, you know, in this sport, you really can't predict much, and I, I wouldn't have bet my whole fortune on Mueller, although he, he did seem to be out in front in training, and uh, I, I thought that any, you know, any day, any given day, Todd Brooker or one of our guys could have done well on this course, and uh, Gary Athens had a good run today. Todd, I, I was listening to his interview, and apparently he felt very good about his run except for one one part in the midsection where he he almost tripped or laid down a, up on pod's pitch there so once you make a mistake like that really there's no way to come back from it he was apparently almost right down from what i understand yeah i, I think this morning the snow was much much harder and uh, harder to grip on than it, than it was in training and todd being uh, out of the gate early he didn't really have much information on that nice to talk to you dave thank you okay back to brian and ken all right, Ted, we are finally ready to go after that delay, and skier number 42 from the United States is Andy Chambers. Just a reminder, Don Stevens will ski number 46, and Chris Kent number 47. Chambers had an incredible result last weekend in Aspen, was 19th, very wide there in Lucy's wheel. He's had a little bit of difficulty handling these, these high-speed sweeping turns, but it's good to see these younger American skiers to really start push, pushing forward. You know, Many people have asked me, do the Americans and Canadians work together? Well, they do and they don't. Each are separate teams. They have their own coaches, their own phys physios, video, timing. All of that is separate. But there's always that challenge between the two countries. Who's going to be the best North Americans? And when you see a good young American team challenging a good young Canadian team, you, get, you build s some confidence amongst the two sides. They really start pushing each other. And that's exactly the kind of thing we need. So that's why to see Doug Lewis and Billy Johnson right up at the front along with Todd Brooker and then a whole raft of young Canadians and Americans behind, it's great. And Chambers at the interval in the number 32 position. He is from Jackson, Wyoming. Second in the downhill standings last year on the Noram circuit and was 19th last weekend at Aspen, Colorado. You're watching live coverage of the 1985 Molson World Downhill from Panorama, British Columbia. Lots more to come today in Sports Weekend. We'll be going to Scotland for the curling.
Chambers has been skiing the lower part reasonably well. He's well off the pace at the interval time. Be a bit disappointed after that outstanding result last weekend, but he did make up some time. So Andy Chambers, who is skier number 42, well back. Skier number 43 from West Germany is 23-year-old Herbert Renoth. His second season on the World Cup Tour and his best result so far this year was in the first race of the season, a 19th at Val Gardena, Italy. Well, he was 12th in training yesterday. He's been running fairly well. 27th at the interval, 130.78. Very good off Reed's roll. Reed's roll is the only bump on the whole turn where you really get any significant air. The racers are flying about 20 to 30 kilometers in the air, but the interesting part is that they have to handle at a very high speed, over 110 kilometers an hour. Down through here, Renoff would be running at about 125 kilometers an hour. One of the reasons why you see he's less experienced, he's letting the skis come up pretty tough at that highest speed. You know, imagine driving, this is faster than you drive your car down the Trans-Canada. Faster than I would, I'm not sure about you though. <laughs> And skier number 44 is Tristan Cochran from the United States. Well, these Americans keep on coming. They've got a young program that they're trying to rebuild. Very lucky there. He caught his edge, has to turn way back up to make the bump. You see he's very wide on the pitch. That will cost him a lot of time because it's happened right before the bump. And you can see at 39th position, he's virtually in last place. Very disappointing to do that at a critical point. The leader is Peter Mueller from Switzerland. His teammate, Marr, is second. Hookletter, the world champion, is third. The only Canadian in the top 15 is Gary Athens, standing in 15th place. Todd Brooker is now 22nd. Just a reminder, still to come, Chris Kent, Don Stevens, and Brian Stemmel. Now, Kent, the best Canadian here this week, was ninth in practice yesterday. We'll ski number 47. Cochran is number 44 and into the number 38 position. And here is another one of the Red Mountain skiers from Rosslyn, British Columbia. Skier number 46 is Donald Stevens. Well, Don is looking to try to reestablish himself. He, along with many of the other younger Canadians, have been regaining their confidence. He had that 14th place in Ferrano, which was a surprise. It was on an easy course, so he still has a lot to learn. He's got to pick up an experience. He's a little bit wild in the upper body. The first seat skiers are very quiet, they're calm. They don't let the upper body fly around, the arms moving around, because that translates right down onto the downhill skis. You don't hold a clean edge, which is so important. These skiers are playing with so many different factors. The centrifugal force, speed, they're looking for aerodynamics. All of these have to be assessed as they're coming down the course, and that's where the experience plays such a big role. The longer you do it, the better you get at it. And that's why skiers like Mueller, who at 28 years old, can still come down and beat many of these young bucks. Stevens has been a little bit rough through the turns, but he's had a fairly good run. 35th at 131.44. Was quickly into his tuck off the bump. Extended slightly, but handled it very well. Now coming onto the lower part, he really must absorb this, this varying terrain. Opened up a bit on the roll there, but no problem. He's keeping those hands together in front of him. That's critical to break the wind. Let those legs act like a piston. He's not absorbing, but very oh. fast. The fastest we've seen so far, so he may pick up some time on the bottom. That would be good to see him in the top 25. Brooker was 130, Stevens at 131, and he picks up only two places to go into the number 33 position. Up next will be skier number 47 from Calgary, Chris Kent. Uh, here's Chris skiing out of the Lake Louise Ski Club. Again, he was ninth in practice yesterday. Injured his knee in November while training in Austria, has come back and come back strong. 19th at the interval. Very good. He's a little slower than he was in training. He said he had good skis for the bottom today. They've worked out the problems. He was very slow before. Now let's see. He has to really absorb these bumps. Look how he's keeping those hands in front. Good off the bump there. Very relaxed. Gary Athens must be standing in the finish, biting his nails because he wouldn't want his teammate to knock him out. 132 on the bottom. Let's see if he can make up time.
Yes! Chris Kidd, a tremendous run, has gone into the number 13 position. The Calgary skier, though, drops Gary Athens down to number 16. And again, Ken, you can't say enough about a skier that comes back from knee surgery like Kent has done this year. Here is Brian Stemmel, skier number 49. Brian from Aurora, Ontario. Karen Stemmel's younger brother, and Brian skied exceptionally well in Ferrano. Very well, had a good downhill result, but was third in the Super G, a very big surprise. He's young, he's only 18 years old, and this is the kind of skier that the Canadian team is really looking to rebuild with. We've got our present top downhillers, but they're taking these skiers like Stemmel, like Daniel Moore, and trying to mold them into good, solid, proficient skiers, he stands much more quietly on his skis than, say, Don Stevens. He is a member of the De National Development Squad, which means he's not actually a member of the Canadian ski team as yet. He will be next year because of his results. But with these younger skiers, they've been making them ski all three disciplines. You had to qualify for that team on the basis of slalom, giant slalom, and downhill. And only once you made the Canadian team would you be allowed to specialize in your best discipline. We can see that Stemmel, few problems as he came down, but had a fairly clean run. Standing 39th at the interval with 131.87. Very relaxed off Reed's roll. Well, I know they're watching back at the Georgian Peak Ski Club in Collingwood, Ontario this afternoon. Can we talk about the younger skiers? Stemmel really typifies the future for Canadian skiing. Only 18 years of age. His sister Karen's here. Uh, she and Laurie Graham have been trying to work with him this week. Well, it takes five years. He's 126 miles an kilometers an hour. It takes about five years to develop a young racer into a world champion. He's in his first year with the national team program. Brian Stemmel, two minutes, 7.96 positions or seconds into the number 40 position. Skier number 50, another young Canadian, is 19-year-old Daniel Moore from nearby Revelstoke, British Columbia. This is the other skier I referred to along with Stemmel. These two have been getting some good results. They did very well on the Can-Am circuit, or the Noram circuit this year. Excuse me, it was the Can-Am when I raced on it way back when. But these young guys have been really, they've been performing at the level they're supposed to perform. They're looking for World Cup experience right now. This is the first time they've been exposed to skiers like Hufflander and Miller and so on. So they've had their eyes wide open all week, and it's been great for them. But they've done very, very well at the level they're supposed to be winning at. They've been winning their races. Ski well in the lower part. You can really see that track that the racers try to stay in. It glistens up. It gets much, much faster. And Daniel Moore from Revelstoke into the number 40 position. Ted Reynolds, the big story for Canada here today. Calgary's Chris Kent, and I understand he's with you now. Brian, Chris is right here explaining to Steve Podborski what he did at Pod's pitch. But whatever you did up there, the rest of it, you must have done awfully well, Chris. Well, it's a kind of a course where, uh, well, running in the later numbers, some of the turns get awfully rough. And uh, if you uh, you can you can get away with going off the line, going a little wider and and tighter in some spots. I was offline quite a bit of the time, but the key the key up there is to make uh, proper turns. After the injury that you had, did you think you'd be this good again this soon? Well, I didn't doubt that I could be, and uh, I mean this soon though, this quickly. Yeah, well, uh, I didn't I didn't doubt that I could be, as I said, but uh, you know it's always. It's always tough coming back from an injury. I was, I was kind of groveling at the start, you know, getting pretty slow times and so on. But it was a matter of just uh, finding a balance on the, on the ski. And I, I felt from the start that I was on the verge of a breakthrough, and uh, that breakthrough started. Well, it's really nice to do it at home, too, isn't it? It's very nice. Congratulations, Chris. Thank you. Back to you, Brian. All right, Ted, congratulations, Chris. The breakthrough has started indeed. We'll return with more live coverage of the Molson World Downhill. Peter Mueller, the leader, Kent, the top Canadian in the number 13 position. Welcome back, live Panorama, British Columbia. Skier number 54, the Canadian Connor O'Brien. Connor from Montreal, 24 years of age. 
In fact, an interesting story here, Ken. Uh, Connor raced with Great Britain last year. Raced with him for, several, for a couple of years. He is a Canadian who had dual citizenship with Britain. Chose to return to the Canadian team. Having some difficulty through Kiner, Kiner's corner there. Being very tentative. He's part of the national development group as well. Really one of these younger skiers. Fairly quiet and calm on his skis. He really stands there, but he's not being aggressive, and that is very important in downhill racing. Through Irwin's incline, and now it's full blast to the bottom. We'll see how, how he's faring as he comes through the interval. Almost five seconds off the pace. Very relaxed over Reed's roll. Kenny is a very good hockey player. You remember back to Henry Switzerland? A lot of you people don't realize, but instead of running every day, some days the Canadians play hockey over in Europe to keep in shape. And let me tell you, next to Brooker, this is the best hockey player on the Canadian team. That's quite an honor. <laughs> Except Brooker had the best skates. We all had to rent skates. Say the other skiers, they say, but Brooker brought his own. Well, you were out there too, Brian. I know I saw you. You scored a couple of goals. And Connor O'Brien into the number 47 position. A little bit of a fall in the finish, but no difficulty. And you heard him say. Picking up Ernst Riedelsberger. He is not a downhiller. He's here as a technical skier. What he'd be doing running the downhill, he's here for the Super G tomorrow. And he's getting familiar with the hill because the skiers are not allowed on the hill unless they're running the downhill. Now, the idea is, not only does he know the terrain, but when he goes into the Super G at a slightly slower speed, he won't be intimidated. He'd be running at very high speed, so he can really let it go. He's looking to try to win that event. And Radelsberger, 22 years of age, fourth season on the World Cup, as you say, a giant slalom specialist from Austria. And you will see the Super G tomorrow afternoon on Sports Weekend as Riedelsberger comes in at 2 minutes, 8.78 seconds, in the number 46 position. The leader, Peter Mueller, will win his second consecutive downhill. He was a winner last week in Aspen, Colorado. His teammate, Marr, is second. Hoopletter is third. The top Canadian is Chris Kent. From the United States, skier number 56, another of the... Young, up-and-coming Americans, Andy Loon, 46th at the interval. Well, there's just one after another after another of these young Americans. I'm Brian Williams, along with Ken Reed and Ted Reynolds. Hope you're enjoying live coverage of this Molson World Downhill. And from all Canadians to Ken Reed, congratulations, Ken, on a major appointment this week as you were named to the Athletes' Council of the International Olympic Committee. Well, Brian, it's a real honor to uh, be recognized as the first Canadian to, to join the council. The main reason I've been put there is because Calgary will be hosting the games in 1988, but I'm looking forward to being able to make a big contribution. Andy Loon into the number 49 position. Peter Mueller remains the leader. He will win the 1985 Molson World Downhill. Ken, what will be some of the things that you will be focusing on as a member of the Olympic Committee as we look at skier number four, 58, Derek Tressler? Well, there's really two things. Uh, I feel that the com com commercialism, professionalism issues of amateur sport need to be brought a little bit more out into the open. As well, doping has been a major issue with Canadians. Of course, the, the controversy starting with the Pan American Games back in 1981 with our weightlifters. Those are things that really need to be brought out and more controlled internationally. I hope that I I can make a contribution to that effect. Well, again, my friend, congratulations. Derek Tressler, 22 years of age, from Rosslyn, British Columbia, 15th in the Canadian Downhill Championships and 15th in the Canadian Super G Championships. He is actually a member of the technical team, the Slalom and Giant Slalom team. The reason he's running this downhill is Derek, as well as Jim Reed, are the two skiers who have been brought over. They're put in both of these events, the Super G tomorrow and the downhill today. And it's a concept to get them used to the speed. They're also fairly proficient. They will be a little bit behind the downhillers, but that's only because they haven't had the many, many hours of training, the miles of training. The Trussler may, in fact, beat some of the other youngers, 
the other younger down there. In fact, he is. He's 49. That's a good result from his start position. And he is. this is really his first downhill training that he's had this year. You mentioned that he did train at the Canadian Championships, but there was only a limited amount of training there. So it's all of the subtleties. You can see that he's not allowing his legs to absorb the rolls as well. He hasn't got the most streamlined tuck. Those are the things that come with many, many hours and kilometer after kilometer of training. Pretty fast on the bottom, 127 kilometers an hour. He's be looking. He's going to be looking for a good result today, only if he can crack into the top 45. Well, he doesn't do that, can He's in position number 49. Peter Mueller is our leader, and once again, here's Ted Reynolds. Ted. Brian, Steve Paborski is standing here, and Steve, if we hadn't had those bags, that guy O'Brien would have taken us right off the hill, wouldn't he? Oh, yeah, a lot of action in the finish. Uh, it's exciting. Mueller, I guess, was as close to being perfection on that hill as anybody could be, eh? Uh, he's an incredible skier. He's had some bad times in the last year or so, but he's always had that ability to turn without throwing any snow up, and it, it's just so hard to imitate. Uh, I never could myself. But he, I gather from what he told me that even at the top, where and he's not the technical guy that some of them are, but he was almost perfect through there today. That's right. His, his skiing has improved uh, dramatically since last year, and he's able to really make those corners go well, and he's obviously one of the, the best gliders that the world has ever seen, so it really stood him in good stead here. I think we've really got a good, another great downhill course, haven't we? This is just heavenly. I really am enjoying myself. Is it as good or better than you expected it to be? Well, the course is better than I thought it would be. It's very fast, very technical. Uh, the only thing they have to do is straighten it out next time. Thanks a lot, Steve. And we go back up top, skier number 61. Boy, we talk about the Swiss coming on. These Rosslyn Red Mountain skiers just don't quit. This is 22-year-old Stan Henson. They've got a very good program there at Red Mountain. They really have been turning out lots of good skiers for many years. Hanson having some difficulty in Lucy's wheel. He's not, he's very weak technically, but what is interesting about Mr. Hanson here, Stan, is that he really lets his skis run. So he's, he's often pretty wild in the turns. You can see he's having trouble staying on the line, but he just has a sense of letting, the, trying to find speed and let them go. I have to disagree with Steve Podborski there, though. This this course really couldn't be a whole lot faster. There's lots of rolls. We've seen a number of the racers have difficulty with some of them. It's 130 kilometers an hour on the bottom. It's plenty fast enough. Downhill racing is speed and intimidation, but it is not to the point where it becomes unreasonably dangerous. I think Heinz Stoll, who set this course, did a good job. It had to be reset slightly from what the organizing committee set up, but it's been well put together. Peter Mueller himself said this was a very tough downhill, and I'm very, very happy to win. He's the guy who won today's race, and I think he'd be the one who would really know. Stan Henson with the 53rd best intermediate time. Now is where he's going to really let the, the speed pick up. He really, he, he just has a knack of letting the skis glide, not hitting, only hitting his edges hard, only as hard as he has to. You can see that 124 kilometers an hour, he's got a, he's a, he's a tall, gangly skier. He's got a very high tuck, but his upper body is very low. You can see that it's the body and those two legs there. Henson into the number 54 position, 203.12. The time turned in by the leader, Peter Mueller. Here is 24-year-old Jim Kirby from Islington, Ontario. We saw Jim uh, in practice, remember back at Kitzbühel, Ken, when he had an arm injury. Well, he, he broke his arm back then, but he's become back. He had a very good result last weekend in Aspen, running from in the 60s. He finished 26th. A little bit off the pace there, but he again is another interesting story. He was a member of the slalom and giant slalom team up to this past year as well. Did very well in the Canadian Championships in downhill, was switched over to the downhill team, and has used that technical ability. He's very confident on his skis and the confidence that he has coming with that to really be able to get some good results in downhill. Now he's had a little bit of difficulty through those rolls, down into a low tuck now. Jim skiing for the Georgian Peak Ski Club is mom and dad out here from Toronto for the race and he is in at two minutes, 8.45 seconds into the number 45 position. This is Nigel Smith from Great Britain. He is 21 years of age, second season on the World Cup. 
Probably the last skier oh. we'll be able to see today in our live exclusive coverage from Panorama. So Still to come, live curling from uh, Scotland, and he is in the number 47 position. Peter Mueller has won this race. His young teammate, Daniel Marr, will finish second. The World Cup downhill champion for 84-85. Helmut Hoofliner will be third, and there will be one Canadian. That's all in the top 15. But what a story. Coming back from knee surgery, finishing 13th, will be Chris Kent from Calgary. Gary Athens just out of the top 15, and Todd Brooker, a very disappointing day, well back in the 20s. And as we wind down our coverage for 84, 85, Nigel Smith at 209.32. We would like to thank all those back at the Ski Association offices in Ottawa for their help so far this season. Still more to come, and we'll return with live coverage of the 1985 Molson World Downhill as Sports Weekend continues. Better than the last one. And this is like... This really is springtime in the Rockies. It's just magnificent here, and a big, big crowd turned out. I understand, for instance, that there were 19 busloads of skiing fans came from Edmonton, and that's a pretty good drive. It's around four hours to drive here from, Gal from Calgary. And, of course, many Calgarians have summer cottages down on Lake Windermere, just at Invermere, so a great many of them are here. And this is a course where people can stretch out and really have a good look at the uh, race course, and they were making lots of noise, and for the Canadians particularly, that is really good. What we're waiting for now is a look at Peter Mueller's run once more, the winning run here today, obviously, so let's go back to Brian. All right, thank you, Ted Reynolds. As we look at the finish area of this panorama course, here's the winning run by the Swiss veteran Peter Mueller skiing out of the number 11 position. He won last week in Aspen, and Ken, he told you and I after the race in Aspen, I was getting awfully tired of the number two. Well, he was really, he's finished second so many times, second at the World Championships, second at, in, at the, in the Olympics last year in Sarajevo. He's built himself back up, and now he was on a roll. Aspen, he skied so well. Yesterday, posting a 203.40. So, if he skis the same kind of run, and even yesterday, we were watching this run, he was very ragged, but he really lets them go. He's very aggressive. He's on a roll. Skiing nicely. He's not the prettiest skier on the circuit, but you can see that here he's pick he's really picking it up. Not that smooth through the turns, but he has that feel, the subtle feeling in his skis to really let it roll. And coming to the interval time, he was clearly ahead. Three tenths of a second ahead of the time posted by Hufflinger. And on the bottom, Mueller was not to be denied. Look at that tuck. Hands are right up in front. Arms are together, absorbing the legs are moving up and down. No difficulty with all of these rolls, even at very, very high speed. You've got to be subtle. You've got to let the skis just float around each turn. And at 130 kilometers an hour, it was almost the fastest speed posted. Well, a tremendous comeback this season for the Swiss veteran Peter Mueller. He wins his second consecutive race. And right now, for the presentation ceremonies, once again, here's Ted Reynolds. Thanks, Brian. With me, Mr. John Rogers, the president and chief operating officer of Molson Companies Limited, who, of course, are playing an integral part this weekend. What a great day. What a great race. Absolutely fantastic, Ted. Just unbelievable. Now, I understand that you are extending your long and close association with the sport. Yes, we've been uh, involved in skiing for the last 18 years with the Mole Star program, the last five years with the downhill, and for the next four years with the men's alpine team and the World Cup downhill. Getting to 1988, that's the Olympic year for gold for Canada, Peter. Gold for Canada. <laughs> well, Peter Muter's getting used to receiving awards, so yeah. you give him another one here. Right. I'm delighted to do it. Yeah. Just a great, great race, Peter. Congratulations. Look at that super. beautiful trophy, yeah. too. I'd like to give it to a crazy Canuck, but otherwise, <laughs> you're Thanks number one. Time. Thank you. Congratulations, Peter. You must have been near perfect on that hill today. I think I had... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take that. <laughs> I got it. We're all tangled up here. I think I'd make a great race. I'm really happy that I can win today. Well, you do a lot of winning in North America. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I, uh, I like to, to stay here. I like to race here. And I hope that I can come, come back a lot of times when I stop with my car to come back for fishing and for relax. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to your next visit. Congratulations, Peter. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and we're going to be back, but first of all, let's take this pause. <laughs> Thank you.
for Brooker, but not for Athens and Kent. Definitely not for Athens and Kent. Chris Kent in particular, you know, what a story, coming back from a knee surgery and coming into the for his best result since his fourth place finish in Val d'Isere four years ago. What about Todd Brooker? Well, Todd, I think, has to be disappointed. He knew he was having his difficulties, but really, he's had a good year. He won a race, as he said earlier, and he's looking to, next year, try to do even better. All right, Ken, thank you, and we are looking forward to tomorrow as we will bring you coverage of the Super G from here at Panorama near Invermere, British Columbia. That's it for today. It's been a good show. The race won by Switzerland's Peter Mueller. Second was his teammate, Marr. Helmut Hoofleiner was third, and the top Canadian, Chris Kent, in the number 13 position. For Ken Reed and Ted Reynolds, 